All right, good morning, everybody here. Motorama, day three. I've got no voice left. I've been talking for two days straight, and we're going to try and make it through, but this is our Ontario Short Track Racing panel. Uh, here we've got three stars of Ontario Racing, Junior Farley from multiple divisions of racing, Jen Hatch from multiple divisions of racing, and Tim Tolton from multiple divisions of racing. See, I thought this all ahead. It worked out perfectly. Uh, first, we're going to start off with uh, Junior Farley. He's got beautiful late model once again for the APC series. Not only that, uh, you've got another special car that you uh, you brought here this week with uh, your burn work wear. Uh, beautiful colors, first off. Um, looks great, even better if we get a stickers and scuffs sticker on it, just saying. Uh, but uh, how are things going this off season? Obviously, you had a great year last year in the APC series. Lots of, uh, lots of big stuff happened for you. Yeah, it's been a busy off season to say the least. So the, we purchased the Super Modified that we're going to be running out of Swigo uh, that you mentioned. So it's here on display with our APC uh, late model. So we got Burn Workwear. They have a, a booth down there, um, co-sanctioned with PV Mart for all their, their workwear that will be available at our store visits uh, throughout the season. Um, yeah, so we've just been busy meeting everybody, doing lots of stuff, shaking hands, and getting ready for the season to start. And, and right beside you, we, we, we have not only a fantastic racer, but the new race director for the Great Lakes Legends Series, Ben by Freshstone. And, and something else that's happening for you, Jen Hatch, uh, you've got some, some big, uh, big news for, for yourself and somebody else in the racing community that uh, you're combining forces with. And I'm really excited to hear this because this is, uh, we talked about this a little bit, but this is a big, big deal for you. Yeah, so um, obviously with the uh, Great Lakes Legends powered by uh, uh, Fieldstone is going to be a big deal this year, obviously, because it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be a lot of stress and you're not, not going to have any friends anymore, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, so that's something that's uh, new this year, but uh, you know, as everybody knows, I've, I've sponsored tons of race cars as we go throughout the seasons. Um, big sponsorship on uh, Dave Dykstra and then Jacob Dykstra was with them for a lot of years. Um, you know, you see, we see your, I don't know, at some point I had like 15 cars that had stickers on it or something like that. So, you know, I've, I was uh, with Maverick Real Estate for quite some time. And uh, just, I think real estate's evolving and changing. And I think, you know, the customer is expecting a bit more for their dollar, et cetera. And uh, so, as you know, I'm good friends with Tracy Ellis and so forth. So uh, we've decided to combine forces, and I'm heading over to PC275. So I'm leaving Maverick Real Estate, which, again, with a great uh, farewell, no, no, uh, no ill intentions at all, just what didn't fit for me anymore, and I think real estate's changing a little bit. So it just works well for me and Tracy to kind of team up and... And we're going to be doing some fun things. We're heading off to Bristol this weekend. And, yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I think we're going to sell a ton of houses. It's a combined force, not just on the track, but also on the market, right? Uh, uh, well, one of, my, uh, <laughs> one of my clients right here. There you go, Junior <laughs> Farley right there, one of the clients. It, it's not just uh, the racing. It's business-to-business -business dealings, right? And Stay within uh, your racing community. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, they're, they're the ones that are going to help you the most, right? Well, exactly, like... Brian Wilson and them stayed true yeah. to me, and I, I drove a long way and, and showed them a lot of houses, <laughs> but Brian Wilson wanted to stay within the community of racing, and so we did that. I've sold a, a ton of race car drivers' uh, homes, et cetera, so. Well, yeah. and, and it's funny because Jen Hatch makes the natural um, segue, Brian Wilson out of Full Throttle Motor Speedway, and we happen to have someone from Full Throttle Motor Speedway yeah. right beside. Uh, it is, uh, I don't want to, I don't know if you like the, the, uh, the years I always add to this, Tim, but the 40-year <laughs> veteran of racing celebrated this year. Uh, how does it feel? And you know what? You won in your 40th year of racing at Varney in the OSS. How does that feel? Uh, awesome. Nothing but awesome. Uh, I never really imagined I'd be doing this for 40 years, but here I am. And, hey, maybe that would have been my last win. Who knows? It it's very, very possible. Well very possible. And you got out there and... Uh, put on a show, uh, how, how it hold off Corey McAllister and those young kids, the 14-year-olds and the 20-year-olds, the but you did so. Uh, how are things looking at Varney for this year? Things are looking up. Uh, constant improvements. Paul's always upgrading things at the racetrack. Uh, our registered car count this year is just unbelievable. 
going to be an exceptional year, I think, and we're just going to keep on moving up forward. Well, and that's great. And you've also expanded this year with Black Magic Racing. You're going to add an additional bone stock car uh, to your your fleet, I guess, of sorts. Uh, it's gone for you got Hot Rod, you got OSS car. Now you got multiple bone stocks. Black Magic Racing also starting to to build and build and build. Yeah, we uh, we got a new bone stock car for my for my wife. To uh, it's going to be a little bit better than the old one. Uh, the old car. My niece, uh, it hasn't been announced yet, but my niece, uh, Katie Fitzpatrick, is willing to give it a try, at least do some testing. If she likes it, then she's going to gonna compete it in a little bit. Uh, we're up to a total of six cars. Um, I guess as you get older, you get crazier, maybe. Um, just having a ball spending my kid's inheritance. <laughs> Well, and it's, again, master of segues. This panel is already working well and well because, Jen, you, you have a son that's racing, so that's definitely, you know exactly what that's like, right? You know, you got, but now you have to be a race director with him in the race, so Yeah, there, there won't be any favoritism there at all, of course. And you know what? Zach's just a good, clean racer anyways. I don't think I'll have any issues with him. I think he'll be the least of my concerns this year. <laughs> Well, that's the that's the hope. I mean, honestly, it uh, the fact is we've talked about this uh, all at length. Uh, this is uh, the, the racing community is a family. It is everywhere. That's really. a and that's a really nice segue into just a little thank you for us and Zach Hatch Racing because uh, Zach found himself out of a ride obviously this year, and uh, Dan Russ picked him up uh, with a full full ride this year. So Zach gets to come back into the Legend Series with his uh, with a full ride this year from Dan Russ Motorsports, and I can't thank him enough. And and that's exactly what we want to see. You want to see, and and you know we we're gonna have a, a bit of transition this year, a bit of change. Uh, Junior Farley, you, you, you're going to see it this year in the APC series. There's, there's been, you know, a, a lot of talk around the series, but for you guys, last year, I can't remember, I'm going to forget that the race it was that, I want to say it was maybe Flambro where you were, you had that thing won. You were flying through the field and it, it just, it didn't get to the, the end, but you've got uh, some fresh faces, you've got some names that, that aren't coming back, so it's opening up that field a little bit more. So what's the outlook for this year? Uh, just to kind of carry on where we, we worked the momentum through the year and we got strong at the end of the year. So hopefully we can start there and then be consistent, right? So um, Dale and Jason prepare a really good Shaw chassis for us. Um, took us a few races to kind of click. Last year we were always doing one-offs at Sobble for the couple, couple seasons before that. And then once I found what they were looking for with their car setups and stuff, um, I'd say halfway through the year we're, we started putting together top fives. Uh, we're in contention for some wins at Sobel and just had some bad luck. But uh, if we can carry that speed, I think we'll we'll be good for a top five, hopefully. And and you're not alone. Like, your teammate as well, Eric, did a phenomenal job. You both yep. were really, really fast, improving uh, race after race after race. The, the, the competition level in the APC late model series is like no other. It is absolutely insane. You obviously you race a lot of different things, Canna Midgets as well, uh, Legends. Uh, literally, there's, there's nothing that you won't race, right? No, I'll definitely try everything. I'd love, I'd love to try every car imaginable, just sometimes schedules, money, everything's not, not uh, in alignment. But yeah, if anybody wants to offer a ride, I'll always be willing to try it. OSS, we got another driver right here. We got we need we need a, a burn workwear, a PV Mart uh, OSS car, I think, right, Tim? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely be all right. I think we'd be uh, we'd be all for it. I mean, that's and that's what's what's nice about it when you go and you race different disciplines. What have you seen? Um, you know, because you you are a touring driver, you go all over Ontario. Uh, the fields are looking pretty good. Competition's looking really good, as, as Tim mentioned already at, uh, at Varney, that the registrations are looking fantastic. Uh, Jen, with the Great Lakes Legends, their fields are looking fantastic. So w it's, there was a lot of question a couple years ago, I think, about the racing scene. And it seems to be, based on the crowds that we saw here yesterday, it seems like it's on its way up. No, uh, that was really, really good to see yesterday. I think last year... Um you know, the show was amazing, and they even topped it, which was hard to believe yesterday. They're closing streets down and people block, parking blocks away, and that's just, that's awesome to hear, right? The sponsors love it. Uh, it's good to see that much interaction between the fans and everything. And then as far as the, the racing goes, um, 
you know, there's, everybody talks about the APC series. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's competitive. There's good drivers in every series, right? Like every Can Am Midgets, Legends, every class that I go into, there's, there's people capable of running in the APC series or, you know, Pinties, anything. So um, just that respect level, no matter what you're in, there, there's good quality competition everywhere in Ontario. And, and the one thing that we're really excited about, Jen, is the, 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 the advancement as well of, of women in our racing scene. Uh, Delaware Speedway, where you race with, with Big Booty Judy, the best named race car in the world, let's she's, be honest. She's pretty famous, yeah. She's pretty famous. She's got her own merch line. Like, that's, yep, that's the does. cool thing about it. Uh, Delaware has got probably the, uh, one of the deepest fields of bone stock racers that are female that are also really fast. You've got a lot of women out there that can really can be a big, big um, player in the in the, the championship. Really, this year you got Jesse Howard, Cassie Howard, yourself. Yep. Uh, the field is, and I mean Delaware's competition level we already know is huge. But and it's, you know I think that was the bone stocks there for some of those girls. Obviously, as a stepping stone, we've um, you know I. Uh, Kira Martin is moving up. Um, Cassie Howard next year is moving up to the V8 stocks. So, you know, they're there for a couple of years. They're getting their feet where they're, they're young. I mean, I've been doing this 31 years and I am not young. So, um, you know, they're, they're getting their feet wet. They're, they're learning the love of the sport. They're having fun with it. And then they're moving up throughout the ranks. And so that's kind of what it's about, I think, honestly. That's a, just a great division to be in just for fun. It's just a fun division. There's not a lot of money being spent. There's not a lot of stuff on the line. You know what I mean? Like, it's really not. You're just there for a fun night, a Friday night with a big crowd. You're live t- or, you know, on live Rogers TV. And so it's just, it's just a fun place to be. But, like, you look at any racetrack, and we have a lot more people in the field now that are females. And so that's awesome because back 30 years ago, there wasn't a lot of us. I had a few ladies to look up to back then, Sharon Zardo and Sharon Yost and stuff like that, but not a lot of them. So now there's a lot more females involved in the sport and a lot more getting good sponsorships and a lot more getting backing, Um, especially down in the States. Do you see a lot of them um, making some big headway? So it's awesome to see. It took a long time, but it's awesome to see. And and what's great is that uh, we actually have a a story about a female racer that's connected to the, the man beside you. Uh, they got married on the start finish line at full throttle and she's been doing it just as, I don't know, just as long as you, right, Tim? Uh, not quite as long. Not but, quite as uh, long? Pretty close. Um, I guess she's not as old as me. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, you guys met at the racetrack, you race at the racetrack. I'm curious. So we put you guys in the equal rides. Who's winning the race between the two of you? Uh, I guess I just never give her an equal ride. <laughs> <laughs> I've so been accused. I, of I that. don't know. I think I think we need to see a, a Tolton versus Tolton on the, uh, the 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 racetrack. It might be something uh, we do this year, right? Uh, yeah. Who knows? You got two bone stocks now, so there Sounds we go. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I've got go. an, my eye on another car that's the same as the the one I just got her. So. <laughs> Maybe we can make that happen. It's it's all about uh, coming up with great and exciting things for the fans, right? And one thing that you guys do up at at Varney is a kids club, and it's something to support the kids that come to the racetrack, make that entire experience for them um, something that they'll never forget. And, and that's it's amazing that you guys do that. Yeah, uh, we 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 have to get the younger people more involved in the racing and and keep this going. We. We can't let it end at the, the past generations. We have to, they have to be interested. They have to be wanting to try it. They have to be wanting to see it. Um, it all starts with the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, and that we've seen a lot this weekend. Actually, there's been a lot of kids here at the show. We got we got one actually just over to the to the right of us, looking at checking out the race cars, right? And it, it's it's great. Um, the, it's not just about watching racing on TV, it's it's going to the actual racetrack, and as someone who's part of the Speedway at full throttle, as someone who's part of tours and going across Ontario, I'm sure we've, we've seen that, but Tim, full throttle has a massive amount of talent. I've got to, I've got to know who's someone that you see that has a future in this business that's out at 
at Varney? I know there's a lot of them, but if you could pick a couple, um, some names that we should be looking out for. Uh, yeah, it, there's so many, and I don't want to point anybody out in particular. Uh, as far as myself goes, uh, when I put a driver in my car, I obviously feel that that driver is deserving of it, and I've chosen drivers to put in my car. So I think that speaks for itself. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to name anybody because I don't think that's fair to point out particular people and leave out people that are deserving. They're all there, they're all competing, and they all deserve the same recognition. Well, there was a, I, I'm not going to remember which, who was it that made that quote, but there was a, there's a line that the best driver in NASCAR isn't in NASCAR. It's on a short track somewhere, either in America. I'm pretty sure it's in Canada, let's be honest. Yep, that, Our, that was my line. Yeah. <laughs> that was my line. Yeah, uh, I don't think we've ever seen the best driver in the world. No. I really don't. It, it's no. somebody who hasn't been given an opportunity, hasn't had the resources to get to where they could be. Uh, I truly believe that we probably haven't seen the best driver. And I, I'm, I'm curious for, for all three of you guys, um, we'll start with Junior, uh, who your racing influence is. Uh, is it somebody that was on the big stage of NASCAR? Is it somebody that you personally knew? Is it somebody that you grew up watching? Yeah, I think uh, Junior Hanley, obviously, just being named after him, um, idolizing him growing up, right? So we started, my sister raised go-karts. I was always around racing. My dad raced um, sportsmen's and hobbies and late models. So um, you obviously look up to them, but Junior was the, the man, right? He was the, the guy that, to beat all over, all over North America. So um, always kept his number through go-karting all the way, and anything that I've ever raced pretty much has had his number. So, and not just what uh, he accomplished, but his work ethic, right? I don't think anybody, even to this day, is uh, 79 or 80, and he, he can probably outwork myself and pretty much anybody in this place still. So um, that's, that's who I respect the most and look up to. Uh, modern day for versatility, you gotta you gotta like Larson, Kyle Bell, those guys. They'll they'll race Cup, they'll and then you know they'll race four times during the week if they can too. So I like both of them as well. And Jen, I'm sure you've got a, a list as well of, of people that that uh, you were in influences for you to go racing. Yeah. So um, for me, I would. I'd have to say um, I was two months old at the racetrack watching uh, my dad. Um, so growing up, my dad raced, so John Jarvis, he raced uh, the Baby Blue 31 hobby car. Uh, he raced Challenger Division, etc. So grew up at the racetrack and, and watching racing, obviously getting it in your, in your blood. Um, always, you know, w ducking, watching wrenches fly through the shop as a young child was, was part of the growing up um, you know, whoa, uh, duck, here it comes. Um, so anyways, and he's, uh, and, and obviously, same thing. My unc we called him Uncle Bob Fields uh, at the time. I'm sure Junior knows that name as well. And uh, Junior Hanley, obviously, uh, is same age as my dad. So my dad's 79 this year and still drag racing. So he left the Oval and went to drag racing quite a few years ago and still does all of his own work on his car at 79 and still drag races two cars. So that he's a pretty big inspiration at 79 still racing. I make fun that 50 plus, I'm like, I don't know if I should be doing this anymore. And here he is at 79, still getting in his car every weekend and, and drag racing. So he'd be a pretty big, pretty big um, supporter of mine as well as, as me being a big cheerleader of his. Well, Tim, I'm curious. <laughs> I want to know who the influences for the Intimidator is. Yeah, who who might that be? Uh, I don't know. Just keep on guessing. Anyway, back before I started racing myself, uh, Chuck Lawler was my he was my hero. Absolutely. Uh, didn't know him personally at the time, but got to know him later and. Uh, and I've always had respect for him, always will. Um, obviously, Dale Earnhardt is, is the one that I've, uh, not that I want to copy, but I've always looked up to him. He taught me so much and has no idea. Never met the man. 
Never met him. That line right there, that that was powerful right there. That it, it, it magical panel right here. Just classics coming out from from all you guys. Uh, obviously, we'll switch gears to to 2024 for everybody. It's going to be a different season for a couple of us, Jen. Right, you're taking over a different role and. And junior, well, <laughs> junior, you're, you're continuing doing all over the all over the, the place, and and Tim as well. Our schedules changed a little bit in OSS, so that might open up some opportunities for you to be racing uh, some places that you haven't raced in a while. Um, we're going Friday night at Velocity uh, in the Sunset Finale. So, are we going to see the Intimidator back at Sunset? Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny you pointed that out. I made a tentative schedule and there's a whole bunch of TBAs on there because I uh, I don't know how many I can give up. Uh, it's going to be unfortunate for Billy, but he may only get one race this year. I don't know. Uh, there's, well, a, there's a really good chance. <laughs> I'm just saying may, maybe we need a, a Black Magic uh, 3 and a 35 OSS car too. <laughs> uh, we might have to do some more expansions. Maybe we can convince Billy to do a combination uh, car. I think they've got an OSS chassis, so it might be possible that we see that. Oh. So, yeah, oh. I'm just saying it might be possible that we see those. Uh, the outlook, obviously, for, for you guys to get out there is to win and, and be competitive. And that car doesn't, you don't have any problems with competition with that car. Uh, it was competitive each and every week, and you had a rotation of drivers in it last year. Yes, yes. Um, I, I wish I could find that golden horseshoe, I, I'll tell you. <laughs> if my luck changed, I, I think uh, I'd probably be talked about a lot more. My car would be talked about a lot more. Um, we, we don't have phenomenal luck. Um, we do what we can with what we got, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, we're not going to ever be a big budget team, but we're having a blast. The biggest thing that you just said, we're having a blast. It's, it's about fun. And Jen, you're taking a different position this year than, yeah, you're, you're still racing, which is yep. great. We're, st we're yep. still racing. You're still going to be doing that. But for you, what's going to be the big thing for this year? Like, uh, is it, is it, you want to go in full, full force and, and, and rule with an iron fist or sit back and, and kind of learn and, and kind of sit back and, and grow and think about potentially the future before major, major things? Yeah, so I had a sit down with uh, Robin yesterday who runs the Ontario Great Lakes Series and we've got a six race um, meetup uh, s uh, schedule out. So we're going to overlap for six races and, and join forces. And those, I mean, we're going to have a really big car count. So, you know, one of our big concerns is how do we run those nights where everybody gets a fair shake at, at making the show or, or you know, not not having too many cars on the track at one time. We did that last year when one year, and it was a bit of a disaster up at Sobel. So we don't want any of those. Uh, we don't want any of those repeats. So we had a good talk yesterday about how we're going to, you know, run the series very similar. We're going to have the same structure. Um, they are a few more years advanced than us, as they've their series is older than our series, so they have a bit more experience and a bit more um, technology and etc. So, on our six race um, lap over, you know, Robin's going to kind of have the helm, and I'll be helping him. I'm heading up to the first two races uh, of the Ontario Great Lakes, and uh, I'm going to or he's going to mentor me on on his race director position and and how he's going to run his series, and I get to. To watch that and learn obviously I did you know do it quite a bit last year kind of off the record like just helping out so I, I have my feet wet already a little bit but our series is a very gentleman like series like we you know you don't see a lot of major crashes you don't see a lot of major um, incidents um, or upset folks in the in the pit area so when we when we have our 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 switch over for the six races, it gets a little bit different and it gets a little bit more competitive and stuff like that. So we've got a lot of learning to do, but I think with Robin behind the wheel of Ontario Great Lakes, I, what a great, this is going to be a great series and we're really excited to work with them for sure. Yeah, there's, this is a lot of great stuff that's going to be a part of things and a lot of great Great stuff on the on the, the the docket this year. I mean, Junior, you <laughs> you like you said, you got. I believe it's a full APC slate for you this season. 
Uh, what else is it that's that's on on tap for you? Because uh, we know, like you said, you'll drive literally anything, as we said earlier on the show. So aside from like driving uh, airplanes and, and trains and boats, uh, <laughs> snowmobiles, uh, well, we were talking about with Lucas Chapman about racing lawnmowers earlier. So uh, what what what's uh, the full season look like for you? Uh, for the most part, it's just going to be the full APC tour and then six races in the, the new Super Modified out of Oswego. So um, that's the plan right now. There is some co-sanctioned events uh, with the legends and stuff. Bob was uh, Bob Bailey's offered his uh, ride if at Sobel and stuff if we choose. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss that, and I'm not going to say no right now, but I do want to make sure I'm putting a full focus on, on the APC program and then the, the Super. So I don't want to water it down and... Last year, I did some stuff with, uh, you know, bucket list items, running three classes in the one day, and I, I felt like I gave everything a fair shot, but I think in, you know, in hindsight, it was, it was not, not uh, the smartest thing to do, but we ran, we ran good in all three classes, but at the same time, it's, it was crazy. It was just very, very hectic. You didn't even, your, my heat was going out for the Can-Ams as I was going over the scales, so it's kind of tough to uh, coordinate. Well, yeah, and I, be, I believe that was uh, that was the live broadcast, and they were saying we're wait, we're waiting on Junior Farley's going to switch cars, yeah. and yeah, I I can't imagine having to run back and forth after doing those races. I know uh, he's not here right at the moment, but uh, Brandon Feeney did the same. He did three classes at the Autumn Colors. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, racers or something else, guys. Really, they're <laughs> just absolutely insane. Now, the, the Super Modify you were talking about uh, that that whole deal came together. I moves a lot late last year. You guys got that? Yeah, that's correct. So, a bucket list item for you? Yeah, that's uh, it's something. Like I said to a few people this weekend, my family we used to always vacation at Oswego. Uh, that's just kind of what we did. And um, ever since I was six, we started going to the classic, and it's something I've always always wanted to do. And you know, I'm I feel like I got 10, 15 years of racing left, and I want it to be on. Uh, you know, I still want to have good reflexes and be on top of it because you can't you can't afford to be off on those things at all they're just they're too quick they're too dangerous so now is the time to to jump into that and and uh, hopefully have some fun with it and 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 build on our program well in the in the uh, the american racing scene is is completely different than than here so uh, are are you expecting any sort of difference in the way that uh, you how you have to race um, i think well i mean it's every series is very competitive open wheel in general is just really clean, right? It's very uh, pure. You can't afford to be touching wheels at 160, 70 miles an hour and stuff down the straightaway. So I think there's a lot of respect there and that's that's what I want to do is go work up to speed and gain the competitors' respect and make sure that I don't put any wheels wrong early on and get a bad name for myself. So I just, you know, we got to start at the back the first three weeks. Um, so that's probably a good thing, kind of see how, see how the everybody races and then if hopefully we're strong enough we can start picking some cars off and and then by the time you know we are able to start in our qualified spot we'll be able to maintain our gain from that well and and not only have you are you going down you going down to, to race but the the great lakes going down again i believe right to flat rock yeah so not sure how so the schedule wasn't supposed to come out how it did anyway so our first race this year is flat rock michigan so that's not exactly ideal but that's how flat rock brought out their schedule so we had to to make that work but so yeah first first race is over the border in uh, northern michigan at flat rock which is some of the some of our guys love it some of our guys don't like it at all so it's it's a complete circle basically which is five lanes wide you don't exactly know where you're supposed to be at any point um and i don't you don't get on the brake very often if at all so it's kind of a weird track to run down there for those little cars um but i was gonna say i really feel like we should like do a stickers and scuff uh, a bus tour down to oswego don't you think I said that right, Oswego. Yeah, I say we do. I say we do that. We do a stickers and scuff uh, bus tour down to Oswego to watch Junior Farley one day. Let's look at the schedule and see when that would happen for a whole bunch of us and fill a bus and make some signs and. 
Oh, yeah. we'll get Blake Outhouse to drive. <laughs> Absolutely. He could probably get us a good deal. Oh, that'd be a nice coach. I was thinking school bus because like budget, <laughs> low budget racers. But uh, Blake could maybe up the game a little bit with a nice coach for sure. That'd be awesome. No, knowing how our, our racing family is, I don't know if we're ever going to make it back though. That's the thing. It's start touring all over the U.S. Yeah, but we're, we're an hour and a half from this track. We're two hours from <laughs> yeah, that right? track. We're three hours from that track. Next thing you know, we're home in a month. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and, and you know what? We've talked about the, some of the American tracks, but Tim has actually had some, a couple of really uh, big racers come in and, and race the, the three car. Um, the, actually, I think you did it before it was the cool thing to do, uh, <laughs> which is uh, getting uh, Ken Schrader. You have, you've had Norm Benning. We actually we had Kenny Wallace, I think, as well in the OSS series in a different car. But yep. how the heck did you get Ken Schrader to come up and drive the three car? Uh, that that wasn't my doing actually. Um, that was arranged already, and he they didn't have a car for him to drive, and it was at my best track potentially, and I for some reason gave up my ride um, just because he was Ken Schrader. Uh, as far as Norm Benning goes, we're we're very good friends, um, and another thing that's not well known this year is he's on my driver roster. Um, last year he was supposed to come up and run a race and he never did give me a date. So this year I'm giving him the date and I'll say, Norm, this is where you need to be and what time you need to be there. And that's, that's great. Cause I mean, it, just again, trying to get some other names out there. It's like, it's like here for Motorama this week, having the Russ brothers, that's an attraction, get people to come out to the racetrack. So if you've got somebody uh, I'm going to ask each one of you guys because, Tim, for somebody that you'd want to have maybe as a visitor to say full throttle to come and race in any one of your classes, whether Canadian, American, all over. <laughs> oh, yeah, Blake. Blake's here. Are you going to drive the bus down for us? Uh, we're going to make an SNS trip down to Flat Rock and Oswego. I had brought up that maybe you would, uh, well, I said we need a bus tour to go down and watch Junior race at Oswego, and then he said, we'll get Blake to drive the bus. <laughs> Perfect. We read the bus. He'll drive it for free. Yeah, well, as long as we don't have to pay you, then we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we, we have to figure out a date to go down and watch Junior. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we were talking about uh, somebody that you'd like to see, Cana some famous Canadian driver, famous American driver. So we're come around to any of the classes. I mean, Varney itself is like no other track out there. So I mean, I think all have you, I, during, Junior, you've raced a couple times at Varney, and and uh, Jen, you've raced at Varney. So I, I think you have to be there to experience. So you can't just look at it and go, oh, I know what that's going to be like because. Every driver I've talked to that races there says, every time you're there, it races a little bit different. <laughs> I, I don't find it different, but... Uh, but you, you have uh, like 40,000 laps there, so yeah. that's yeah. a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that was a calculation from years ago, too. <laughs> um, so what, we were probably at like 80, 100,000 by now, right? Yeah, pretty sure, pretty sure. You got to the... Yeah. Who would I put in my car? Um, I don't even know the answer. Um, I think we're probably going to find out. Uh, there's probably somebody that's going to be asked to be put in my car. Uh, I've, I've already asked J.R. Fitzpatrick. He had interest. Uh, it didn't come through. Um, I'm not going to give up on him. Nope. Uh, nope. I still want him to do it. I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know if he will actually come through and, and do it, but uh, I'm going to keep trying. Well, I mean, we also got two others right beside you. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah Jen Hatch and, and Junior Farley right here. We'll put it together. Uh, let's get a, let's get a uh, um, uh, Tracy Ellis P, PC uh, 275 mix with Jen Hatch PC 275 burn work where PV Mart, uh, Black Magic Racing number three car. There we yeah, go. Yeah, sure. We're putting the deals all together right here. Um, That's how it happens. That's how it happens, literally right on the stage, everybody. Uh, Jen, uh, let's see. You've got the Legend Series. So who you want coming down to make a big start? Somebody, 
Hey, J.R. Fitzpatrick's a good choice, actually. You could probably put him in everything here, but... Yeah, he'd be awesome in a legend car, too. I don't know if he's ever raced a legend car. I know you have. I actually... I, I, don't, I don't know either, actually. I don't know actually. if he has. So there you go. J.R., reach out if you want to try a legend car. We'll put you in something. For me, it would be Ryan Newman. He's my he's my guy. I love Ryan. I've, I've followed him forever. Um... I was always a Rusty Wallace fan. You'll remember 1993, my Rusty Wallace paint scheme street stock. <laughs> oh, God, the throwbacks. Um, that was, Yeah, that was just a terrible paint job. But you know what? <laughs> we did it on our own in a, in a barn. And that's when you want to go racing, you'll do anything yeah. to go racing. Who cares? You don't right? have to be an artist to be a racer. No, nope, that's right. So that was like 93. I was a Rusty Wallace fan. But I would say currently I would, I would pick anybody I'd ask Ryan Newman to come run my car. And you know what? He is semi-retired. Now, he's running the full Smart Modified Series this year. Yes, but he is. I, I don't think Ryan would be a guy to say no. He, he probably wouldn't, actually. So if actually, it was, there you go. Should have done that for Flat Rock, Michigan. It would have been the closest track for him. But, well, Ryan yeah. Newman, if you're listening, well, we yeah, will definitely yeah. get you. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's listening. He's got, he doesn't have anything else to do. But uh, Junior, obviously, APCs, is, is, they've had some, some big names come in through there. Obviously, none bigger than Junior Farley. But uh, somebody that you, would, you wouldn't mind seeing uh, take, take a, a, a trip into the series. There's a lot of late model drivers that you could choose from. So, uh, I know, obviously, uh, my, my choice is Bubba Pollard. He's done it before. He's done the Canadian Nationals, but I want to see him do something something else, not Delaware or something like that, but come over and run, like, Flambro. That would be fun. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of guys uh, nowadays you could pick from. Nasi, Pollard, all, all of them are top names, Casey Roderick. Um, but from uh, just a personal standpoint, I'd love to see Pete Shepard Sr. get back behind the wheel. So uh, grow, growing up, he was like the guy to beat at Flambro. I think he had 11 or 12 uh, feature wins one year. Um, Hanley was off racing other stuff when, when I was there as a kid a lot. So uh, he was another guy that I looked up to, as well as Charlie Lawler. Uh, my dad was really close with Charlie and, and uh, Dan, obviously, working here t at Two Speed this weekend. So just from a nostal nostalgic standpoint, I think we got to get Pete Shepard Sr. back out. I, I love the idea, you know, I think even if we had some, like, we talked about doing this with, with OSS, it was something that we had an idea of, is getting a whole bunch of, of former, you know, uh, retired drivers, we'll say, come and do some sort of a, a charity race. Legends, obviously, are, are, I think, one of the best choices out there for doing something like that in terms of a, a series where there's there's plenty of cars, lots of great competition, um, you know, it, there's... There's definitely a, a market to see some of the old names come on out and, and do something. How I want to see Junior Hanley come and do it. I don't know if he would do it or not, but uh, you get to run the 72. So how did how did you get to did you approach Junior about running uh, that that number, but also the font as well? That's that's key thing. Um, I'm not sure if my dad ever spoke to him. We just kind of did it when we were when I was in go karts. So um, we'd always see him at Cug and stuff and. My dad actually used to pick Jeff Hanley up and go go-karting. We'd, we'd pick him up in Milton, and then they go to uh, Bingham, or sorry, Earlsville Cartway, I guess, back in those days, and because uh, Junior was away racing. So, and then they go to North Halton and race Saturday night, which was in Georgetown or Lime Rock there, so or Limehouse, sorry. Um, yeah, so that's. I don't know if we needed permission. We just kind of did it. So it's better to do than ask sometimes. And and Jen, uh, seventeen. Where does that come from? Um, that was when I was running out of the Medinko Motorsports uh, stable, obviously. 17 was their number, and I'm not rewrapping my car this year. But um, So Zach, uh, Zach's 71, and so he just flipped the number, and, and that kept it a little bit easy. I was always um, number two for, I don't know, 15 years or whatever for um, Rusty Wallace, obviously. And I ran 19 one year for my sponsors, uh, Unicorn Truck Wash, uh, their son, Lucas, um, he was born on the 19th and he had passed away, so we ran the 19 in honor of him. I've ran, uh, and then I ran 14 for years and years and years. I had to run 12 one year because two was gone. Like, it's just, it's just a number, and, and so I wasn't really branded to a number at this point. I, I don't know, again, if we have to ask the intimidator <laughs> about, uh, about where his influence came in for the three, but it's a cool story that you you use the actual number three, and there's a, we talked about it on our podcast, but there was an actual really cool story behind getting the three. There was. Uh, my good friend Scott Marvin, uh, 
he he had the car sitting in his garage, hadn't run for a couple years, and there was a race scheduled at Full Throttle, and we always thought it would be really nice to have a race there. And I called him and I said, can I borrow your car? And he said, what are you, crazy? Your car's better than mine. Why do you want my car? And I said, well, there's a race at Full Throttle, and I, we've always wanted to do that. He said, okay, but I want you to run number three. And I didn't want to be an imitator. I didn't want to, like, the guy was my hero. I didn't want anybody to think I was trying to pretend to be him or anything. And I said, you know what? If you get permission from Richard Childress Racing, I'll, I'll do it for you. Thought I had the perfect out, and uh, I didn't. <laughs> he, he didn't. He didn't think he was going to get permission, and he told me that one day. And then the next time I saw him, he said, oh, guess who called? And sure enough, they called him back and said, as long as you send us a picture of the car, you can, uh, you can put the number on. So, so he won that one. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good one to win, though. And, and it turned into having the, the name as well, Black Magic Racing. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that people are able to follow along with all three of you guys all season long. So let's make sure we throw out, uh, you got to make sure you remember everything, but uh, we got to make sure we, we throw out your social medias uh, so people can follow along with you. So we'll start with Tim and work our way back down. Yeah, we're, uh, we're on Facebook mostly, uh, huge presence on there. We're also on Twitter in a, bit, a little bit smaller way. Instagram, uh, we have multiple YouTube <laughs> uh, channels that haven't been followed through, lost passwords, we keep making new ones. We're out there if you search for us. <laughs> but uh, lots, lots of uh, posts on Facebook if anybody wants to look for them. And Jen Hatch. I, we'll throw at that one and, and Great Lakes as well. Yep, so Great Lakes is on Facebook, obviously. Um, and uh, Jennifer Hatch is on Facebook. Uh, also Jennifer Hatch uh, Real Estate, or r Realtor, I should say. And uh, the, the usuals, the TikToks, the Instagrams, the Twitters. Um, I don't have a, a racing page for... Uh, for Facebook because I have realtor page and it's just, it gets a lot and we have Zach Hatch racing as well. So we can follow along Zach's uh, career cause he's definitely the up and coming hatch racing, not the going out racing. So yeah, so Jennifer Hatch on, on Facebook and that it seems to be growing rapidly right now, which is awesome. So a lot more followers and again, uh, check out the Great Lakes legends uh, as well. And Junior Farley, how can we find you and follow along on social media? Yeah, so JuniorFarleyMotorsports.com, um, we have our website, and then we also have Junior Farley Motorsports on Facebook and Instagram. So those are the main three. And then, of course, uh, EPCRacingSeries.com, so that's where you'll find all the updates for all the uh, United Racing Series. And before we, uh, we wrap it up, I want to make sure you guys give your thank yous uh, to your partners. Uh, make sure we remember everybody and, and any other thank yous that you want to have, okay? Yeah, first off, uh, we got to thank uh, Motorama for putting the show on and then uh, Cam, Sickers, and Scuff. So thank you for, for letting us come on. It's much appreciated. Uh, we have Burn, Burn Workwear, uh, PV Mart. Uh, we just picked up um, a, a new company out of Guelph. So uh, they were actually here yesterday. So... Uh, Onyx Hose and Tube, uh, they'll be on both both cars this year, and then Epic Racewear and Inside Track as well. Um, so again, 2024 season, um, returning sponsors are Auto Fusion Towing, and I uh, get Robson Scrap Metal, and I've got uh, Epic Racewear back again, uh, helping out with uh, all of our items. Um, RPN Design is doing a news design who works in conjunction with Epic, so they're they're good working partners together. Um, I've got uh, a new a couple new sponsors. I've got um, Finch uh, Contracting has come on in a fairly big way. St. Mary's Ford came back as well, and I've got Jay's Detail Shop is back or coming on. Sorry. And I've got also uh, Jill at BMO, uh, a girlfriend from Exeter, who's a great mortgage broker. So she's coming on this year. So picked up quite a few new ones this year. And, uh, of course, now uh, the Tracy Ellis, uh, Jennifer Hatch team of PC275. And we'll, we'll wrap up the thank yous with uh, Tim Tolton. 
Yeah, uh, I'd like to thank Engines from Hal. Um, he's been with us a long time, always there for us. Doesn't matter what time of the day, if we have an emergency at a race, he's been known to travel there and, and help us out. Um, Full Throttle Speedway has been a, a huge part in helping me get my fleet of cars ready this year. Um, I don't have a shop currently, and uh, he's given me a spot, given me everything I've needed, basically. Uh, can't leave him out around the house. Contracting is new. He's a former crew chief of mine from years ago. We recently reconnected. He's uh, starting a business back up, and he's on board with us this year. Stickers and scuffs. Cam, thank you so much for having us and everything you do. Uh, Graydon, I know you're out there. Somewhere. I know you're there. He's in the sunshine and the heat. That's where he is. <laughs> yeah, he's probably watching, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks thanks to them, Motorama, for putting this show on, giving us a place, giving these media guys a place to do their thing. Much appreciated. Well, definitely thank you, uh, Stickers and Scuffs. On s social media, you can follow us, us at, at SNS Podcast. Uh, Facebook is our biggest... Uh, biggest channel uh, subscribe to us on youtube we really appreciate it and uh thank you as well motorama uh, as as you guys have all said uh, giving us an opportunity to do this to have a spot where people can come and see us thank you bryce who doesn't get enough love for standing behind that camera from walking all over the place uh really really want to thank i uh, i forgot somebody very important speedy auto service in guelph like huge yeah. I, I apologize for that. It put me on the spot, and I always forget stuff. <laughs> <laughs> still, getting, still getting used to the whole uh, remembering partners, but just as I was saying, Bryce doesn't get enough love for all he does here. Uh, thanks to everybody that's uh, put this on for us and, and gave us an opportunity. Boneyard Event Services, um, they're the ones that put that together for us. Greg McPherson, uh, Dave, everybody at uh, the show, thank you uh, for giving us this opportunity. Thanks to all three of you guys for coming on. And, and chatting with me on a, a panel of sorts. I, I know maybe we don't do panels as such, but this is what I want. I want Ontario Short Track Racers to talk with, and these top three uh, were, were absolutely fun. So thank you guys. Have yourselves a great rest of the show.